What do you get when you mix a European capital rich in history with hundreds of teachers from around the world who are meeting together to share their best practices and how they deal with that age-old challenge of teachers? How do you keep your students interested and engaged? You get Microsoft's Partners in Learning Global Forum, a chance for teachers from around the world to meet, to exchange ideas and to make their teaching practices even better. Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic, was the meeting point for this international group of teachers. The eighth such annual gathering. 83 different countries were represented at this year's event. Teachers were selected to come here based on the ideas they have for using technology in their own teaching to make the learning experience more engaging and rewarding for the 21st century, both inside and outside the classroom. There were six teachers from India who traveled to Prague, or Praha, as it is called locally. I am I'm lucky. I am 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 lucky. Paperwork done, and it was time for the sometimes jet lag teachers to let their hair down at an opening reception. More than 50% of today's jobs require some skills in technology, and this figure is likely to increase to 77% in the next decade. By bringing technology to life in their classrooms, these teachers would help their young students take their place in the working world. Five out of the six Indian teachers selected to go to Prague were from government schools. And, as you could guess, choosing these finalists from our enormous country was an enormous task. We have six national heroes who have come here. These six have been selected out of 28,759 projects that we received this year and 1,31,000 teachers that participated. The idea of bringing them here is primarily to, for them to get an exposure, to meet other teachers, meet the teachers of the other countries. When they come here and they realize that the challenges are not theirs alone, you know, they, the, the challenges are common all across. But how they manage to overcome those challenges with their innovative practices and how others are doing it and then they collaborate and share, that's what this forum is all about. The six Indian teachers join more than 100 others from around the globe in putting up their projects. The essence of the ideas which they are using to reach out to their 21st century pupils. Many of the projects represented here were examples of innovative use of low-cost techniques for countries where the budget of a school is limited and where even electricity cannot always be guaranteed. The idea is to use technology to accelerate the learning process and increase the impact of what is being taught. The projects are all up, final touches are being given. The teachers here are ready to share their ideas with teachers from around the world and also for the judges as well. And to start with, we're going to be taking a look at what the six Indian teachers from schools in India, what ideas they have brought to this platform, what they intend to share with the world. Mamta Narula teaches the 11th and 12th standards in New Delhi. She loves swimming and also fashion, drama and creating anything new. As a teacher right now when we are dealing with students, yes. tomorrow they will become businessmen, they will become employees and uh, what we have to do is we have to make them sensitive towards this issue of corporate social responsibility. They have made one Facebook uh, page called Feed a Kid where you have to get a photograph clicked with the free children where you are distributing them something okay. and you have to get a photograph clicked and posted there. So it, it will encourage people to go to the streets, students. To, be, to become involved. Yeah. Okay. So street children and uh, share the joy when they are giving something, some gift or e-tables to them. They have arranged uh, funds for from the companies okay. for orphanages and old age homes. Okay. One of our school students he helped the domestic maids. Uh, domestic help in opening bank accounts. So he has he has 200 domestic may, uh, domestic help to open the bank accounts. Rajesh Tiwari is the principal of his government school in Bhopal, and is a theatre artist 
who also loves cricket and playing a variety of drums. My project is actually an environmental project that is low carbon society in Bhopal. We used to have less than 1,000 vehicles in Bhopal in 1947. Why? Today's figures are 7.42 lakhs as per the RTO records. We had gone to pollution control board, we had gone to RTO. I wanted to give exposure to my students that just move beyond the classrooms, go and become independent inquirers, go and talk to people, go and do some research work, try and work in collaboration. They have gained confidence. The youngest teacher of the group was Firoz Khan from Bulancher in Uttar Pradesh. He said he might have been a journalist if the death of his father had not meant that he needed to get a job urgently. But now that he is teaching, he is enjoying the profession. Chemistry is a fun. I have made a periodic table in which we have kept approximately 105 elements below. We know that it is very tough for a student to learn. So when we take any elements, उठाकर उसके सही स्पेस पर रखेंगे तो इसको ये कैच कर लेगा ऑटोमेटिकली एंड अगर हम किसी एलिमेंट को बाय द वे किसी रॉन्ग स्पेस पर रखते हैं तो ये वापस भाग जाएगा इट इज अ गेम इट इज अ पर्सनल इट इज अ फन दिस इज अ न्यूक्लियर रिएक्टर इट इज अ वेरी टफ टॉपिक फॉर स्टूडेंट बिकॉज वी हैव नॉट यूरेनियम इन क्लास माई स्टूडेंट इज मैनी स्टूडेंट एंड बिलोंग टू पुअर फैमिली एंड वी गिव टू वी गिव हिम uh food dress okay. uh and books also yes. uh, in uh, when uh, many problem in village electricity but now this time my class is high tech anil sunune works in a zila parishad primary school in maharashtra where he teaches all subjects to students of the first to fourth standard he loves old film songs my project is a classmate actually it is a inter portable interactive whiteboard okay. then it is all in one project pc you have to only plug the power and uh, all everything needed for, uh, for classroom teaching the hardware needed for classroom teaching is uh, present in the actually the age group the 6 to 10 and uh, this at primary level students were allowed to watch videos and allowed to watch television uh, shows and all those things and uh, when i show them uh, various clippings and uh, all those, i don't try to uh, teach them actually just listen and see and they enjoy the things and indirectly they are learning it's interactive it's cost low uh, it uh, costed me near about 60000 indian rupees now uh, students love their school and uh, also uh, there was uh, a positive change in attitudinal ch positive attitudinal change in parents about their school that uh, government schools are also uh, as like as that of uh, private schools, as the, in the sense of quality of education. Hari Krishna Arya from a government senior secondary school in Rajasthan only started using computers at the age of 45. Now, at nearly 60, he is convinced about and committed to the use of computers in education. Main objective of my project is to uh, explore biodiversity in an interesting way. To the other schools, this content sent through email. After that, yes. we had discussions uh, with the students of other schools uh, through video conferencing and okay. webinar. Uh, students from uh, different uh, countries also yes. collaborated us uh, about the biodiversity and different flora and fauna, uh, means different animals and plants uh, in their areas. You know? They sent uh, photographs and they sent yes. videos in our government yes. schools, especially in our state. Uh, uh, there are uh, much scarcity of uh, teachers. I am teaching the students. I am taking the class from my school to another school. Okay. These, these students uh, are of another school. I am taking the class from my school to okay. this. Okay. Uh, students asking question to me from their schools. Chandra Prabha Bhatia works in a Kendra Vidyalaya in Kolkata, where she teaches social science to students from the 8th to the 10th. She loves reading about history. I was a mentor, facilitator and a guide to the students and they carried out this work of their own. For example, being a social science teacher, there is a lesson called as resources. So before introducing the lesson resources to the students, I asked my students to go out of the world, explore resources of their own and then make a video of that. So the students in a group of four and five went out, they explored the nature, they made a beautiful presentation which is here where I have done nothing I have just a facilitator here even the sound recording video recording everything was done to uh, was done by them thereafter I started my lesson believe me 
my lesson became so interesting. I want to be a change agent where a teacher just uh, the role of the teacher is minimized in the classroom and the, the student can explore and learn of their own. Here I have also become a learner. So many things okay. as a teacher we don't know and it's good to learn from them. Okay. So a lot of learning element is also involved here and at the end it's not it's not it's just not a learning one way taking place it's a learning two way going on. and the range of these projects on display here in Prague is really dazzling. But there are, of course, a couple of things that they have in common. One is, of course, the use of technology in education as a way to engage the 21st century student. And the other is a very sincere attempt to make the world a better place. The objective is to bring to the fore the impact child labor has had on the well-being of the child. So we visit the two communities in our area um, Private child labor is very prevalent, efficient community, and according to the students, the children we interviewed, yes. this one wants to become a soldier, she wants to be a nurse, she wants to be a lawyer. How are they going to realize these dreams if they, we, we leave them to remain here? So we rescue some of them, okay. they are here, we have enrolled them in school now. This boy, for instance, is a sportsman in his school, but he dropped out to go and do fishing. Okay. So we have brought him back, oh, there he is, good. and we have visited him in school to see how he is moving on. So in our own small way, we'll be able to, we'll be able to solve a real world problem. They created a blog okay. and then they shared ideas and they also created this, a, a live group, group discussion okay. where they continue to have discussion. And then uh, with the information that they, get, they gathered, they used a, a songsmith to make a child labor rap song. That's what they did. And then uh, we used publisher. They, they created a lot of um, poems and articles yes. and short stories on child labor activities and they are very happy to be part of a rescue a mission like this. Helping children with special needs, that's this project from Netherlands. And we found out that the Kinect works really well for training physical fitness and for training balance problems. Right. How does that work? How do you do that? Well, the kids, they don't need a controller. They move and they control the game by their own movements. So they don't need a, a difficult controller, but they do it with their own body. And children with special needs, they often have poor fine motor skills. So a normal controller is really hard for them to use. And this doesn't need the controller, so they can use it with their whole body. She's having great fun gaming, but in the meantime, she is also training her motor skills. She can't play a regular computer game because her movements are very much impaired. Her arms and her legs go all the way. But like this, she can play soccer inside and then use it outside with her friends. The children itself, they experience that they got better and better in the motor skills. It's very motivating and it's also good for their self-confidence and their self-esteem. So they are much happier, we must say. In the school, that the thing that worried students the most was the violence that was uh, on the rise in Puerto Rico. Once students learned that this was what they were going to talk about, they have to study, okay. uh, research, yeah. and then come up with a plan on how to create an effective campaign to, to create an uh, awareness of what yes. violence is doing and how we can prevent it. Now, part of it was, for example, to invite people that had been victims of violence in Puerto Rico. Right. Uh, one of them, for example, she was a victim of domestic violence. Her boyfriend uh, and her had an argument and he ran her over. She lost her two legs. And this other friend was invited uh, the, and he was invited because his girlfriend was used as a human shield in an argument between two people that were in a shootout. Students saw this and they were impacted by it. All the graphics are done by the students, all Everything, the art, all the, design, all the programming is done by them. This is like a hero in training application. Yeah. Uh, one of the basic elements is for you to take pictures. And once you take the picture, you put, it has to be about positive news. Okay. Only idea, good news. Only good news. That's really nice. It's a hero in training. And if you put no. good news, you rank up. It's an award system. No. What was the biggest learning for the students and yourself also in this project? Well, I, I think, well, ideally, I think that what they learn is that they don't need Superman to make a change. 
that it was within them. They are humble, they are honorable, they are kind. Okay. And if they are like this, then we're not that far from the heroes that we see in the comic books. Our project is called Little Hands Big World, and we teach in two different schools, and we link our classrooms through technology. I'm kindergarten, my colleague Leah is grade one, and we're using our collaboration to empower our youngest learners to function as agents of change in their families and in their communities. For example, you can see our students ran a littlest lunch competition, reducing garbage in their lunches and comparing who could have the most reusable containers. Most recently, our students have become really interested in animals, and one of the things we've done just before we left for the conference was to adopt seven polar bears. So my students baked cookies to raise enough money to adopt um, polar bears through the WWF Symbolic Adoption Program. And my classroom has been partnering with the Brandon Humane Society Animal Shelter to help dogs that don't have homes. So as part of our social studies curriculum, we're identifying what animal needs are and what human needs are. Yes. So we use Skype to bring a local veterinarian into our classroom okay. to learn more about animal needs. Mm -hmm. Then we partnered with the animal shelter, mm -hmm. and my boys and girls decided one way they could help would be to bake dog biscuits for the dogs that don't have home. How old are these children? Ages four to seven, so our oh, youngest seven. learners, <laughs> yes. And at that age also they can make a difference. They certainly can. After all that work, it is time for the teachers to take a breather and enjoy the incredible ancient architecture of Prague. There's no point coming all the way to Prague without going out and see the cities, so the teachers are setting off for an excursion, all bundled up warm because they're from the tropics and it's one degree Celsius out there. goes back many centuries and the architecture at the heart of the old town is magnificent. There is the Gothic beauty of St. Vitus' Cathedral where King Wenceslas is buried. Building of this cathedral began in the year 1344 and it took six centuries to build. The astronomical clock was installed in the old town square in the year 1410 and is the oldest working astronomical clock in the world. It's a very, very beautiful city, and it's it's a dream destination for me. It, uh, I am very lucky that uh, I got uh, a chance to visit Prague. It's uh, the most beautiful experience of my life. Back to work now, and the teachers are busy explaining their projects to their international colleagues. The teachers who come here from around the world use the opportunity to talk to each other about their own classroom styles, the different teaching methods. They do, of course, find that there are many, many differences in the challenges they face and the infrastructure that they have access to. But they also find that they have a whole lot in common. Uh, although language is different, but uh, all of us, we have a same concern that how should we make our teaching more effective. The partisan learning movement works in 119 countries with schools and also governments around the world to work out ways to improve education using technology. 11 million teachers have been trained under the program so far and an estimated 200 million students have been reached through them. Well, truly we believe in the power of education to transform the world. And technology is the infrastructure that enables uh, teachers and students to reach their full potential. Many countries, of course, especially the poorer countries, the developing countries, don't have the kind of facilities. Some don't even have electricity forget the high tech. Absolutely. Do you still feel this is relevant in those areas as well? I do. I think what we all need to do, um, and we are at Microsoft doing this through Shape the Future, is making sure that we contribute to getting devices, one-on-one -on -one devices and computing to all students in the world. So over the past 10 years we've contributed 500 million. 
what we're really excited about is another five years of 250 million okay. for a running total yeah. of 750 million. Our goal is to reach at least 20 million teachers in the future. We are committed, and more importantly, the teachers are making the difference. Their commitment back to this program is really what makes it work. I think it's very heartening to see that we have teachers from not only you know the private space, yes. but even the public schools, which is the majority. The infrastructure per se is zilch in majority of the schools, but our teachers, despite these odds, have been able to overcome those. If we empower these teachers, the next digital generation, which is going to be coming out, is going to benefit India for sure. is meant to be a celebration of education and while people are here from around the world they seem to have one thing in common the belief that all celebrations should end with a party what has this whole experience been like for you oh wonderful and you're asking me today when it's the gala dinner <laughs> it's wonderful tonight well the whole experience was amazing since you get to meet a lot of people from you know coming out of from different languages different cultures and all of them all together sitting at one forum that was a wonderful experience and a lot of learning it's so mind blowing and I've learned a lot I'm going to share with my other teachers in my country when I go back what was most precious about this meeting for you just learning new ideas meeting new friends making friends and that was very good for me lovely lovely yes. and will you head back to Ghana with New energy for your students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I've learned a lot. Okay. New uh, IT skills, how to develop programs for your yes. uh, schools and all those right. things. And so I think it will help Ghana a lot. Uh, for me, what I've learned is that uh, education and technology has no barrier. Yes. Whether language, culture, it all brings us together. The culmination of the event was a gala dinner held in the Prague Castle. The teachers decked in their country's traditional finery added color to this centuries-old castle. It was time for the awards to be announced. A chance for national and regional pride. But above all, pride in the whole profession of teaching. in the air, some of the award winners, those who have got the prizes for their project, but really everyone here, all the teachers who came here to Prague are winners. They're the best in their country, chosen to come here, share their ideas, represent their projects, and it's really a celebration of teaching, a celebration of education. And there was a lot of joy all around this festival of education a chance to honor and celebrate the profession of teaching in the 21st century. Come on, come on. The beautiful and historical city of Prague has been drawing tourists by the millions to see a spectacular sight. The hundreds of teachers who were here to share their ideas certainly enjoyed the city, but for them it was more than just tourism. They shared their best practices, what they are doing to engage the 21st century students in their classrooms around the world. And when they head back to those classrooms in their different countries, they really hope to make a difference, to engage the students more, to have shared ideas that will make their classrooms even better. With Alphonse Raj, Maya Sharma in Prague for Indie TV.